just to let you guys know, I'm working on a video right now about the, uh, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, like from beginning to end. It's taking a while because this is something that um, actually I had focused on in college. Uh, you got to pick a specific area when you're, you know, majoring in history. And I had picked the Middle East. This was like 2000 to 2004 when I was in college. So, you know, 9-11 had just happened and there was something in Palestine at that time going on called the Second Intifada or Uprising. So the Middle East was constantly in the news. That's coming. Uh, that's going to be like a long documentary type video that I may have to upload to Spotify because it's going to have a lot of graphic violence in it. So YouTube might not take that. But just to preview it a little bit in this video, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of false information and a lot of uh, confusion online about you know, this conflict and where it started. So Hamas actually started, the, the founder of Hamas is a guy named Ahmad Yassin. He was a Palestinian member of the Muslim Brotherhood. The Mother, Muslim Brotherhood is another uh, group that was actually centered in Egypt, but they had a wing in Palestine. Now this goes all the way back to, you know, way before this, uh, this creation of Hamas and these intifadas and all that happened. He was actually a quadriplegic from pretty uh, from a pretty humble background, wheelchair bound, so he couldn't be a fighter himself. The Muslim Brotherhood did not believe in you know using violence against uh, Israel, and they didn't believe in like the same tactics that the PLO, the Palestinian Liber Liberation Organization, were taking. Uh, they were strictly for nonviolent resistance means at first. In the late 80s, I think it was in 87, Ahmad Yassin decided to uh, break off from the Muslim Brotherhood and make a, a separate group called Hamas, which is, I believe, an Arabic acronym for uh, Islamic Resistance Movement. So at first, they were not committing any violence against Israeli civilians or even against Israeli soldiers at first. They were limiting their violence to actually Palestinian collaborators with Israel, people who they thought were, you know, cooperating with the Israeli government and betraying the Palestinian people. There was also some violence against people who they considered to be immoral or leading Palestinians into immorality. Now this included like drug dealers or people who would um, like lead women into immoral behavior, prostitutes and things like that. So they were actually engaging in some acts of violence against people like this. Now there was a, a gradual progression of that though. Uh, they eventually expanded that to include violence against Israeli soldiers. They formed a separate wing. It's called, called the Izzedin al-Qassam Brigades, named after a guy, uh, Izzedin al-Qassam. He was a, a resistance fighter against the British, actually, back in the 30s. So they named the brigades after him. And uh, they had a leader back in the early 90s during the first intifada, the first uprising. His name was, uh, his name was Yaya Ayash. He was an engineer, and he was a bomb maker. And... Uh, he and I don't know the extent of his conversations with Yassin, but they eventually decided to target Israeli soldiers and to use suicide bombings. So at first they were strictly limiting their violence only to Israeli soldiers. There was one particular event though that changed that. Uh, in 1994 in Hebron, in, in, the, in the region of Hebron, at a mosque called the Ibrahimi Mosque, uh, there were Muslims worshiping there and a settler named Baruch Goldstein came in and he massacred uh, 29 Muslims while they were worshiping during the month of Ramadan. There were riots right after that amongst the Palestinian Muslims, or amongst the Muslims, or the Arab Muslims, whoever was there, and uh, the Israeli soldiers killed another 19. So the total death toll was about 48 uh, Muslims after this massacre. It was this that changed the Palestinians' outlook, uh, the, the Ham not the Palestinians, the Hamas's outlook on attacks against civilians. After this, they began to target civilians. It had been a debate about whether or not to do that previously, but after the Hebron massacre, that debate was over. So uh, the, their leader, Yahya Ayash, the, the engineer, the bomb maker, he was eventually killed uh, by Israel not too long after that, actually, uh, they did it through one of their collaborators who happened to be his uncle. Uh, Yaya Ayash's uncle gave him a cell phone that had been booby-trapped and it was like an exploding cell phone and that's how he was killed. So the Hebron massacre and then Yaya Ayash's death not too long after that, 100,000 100, Palestinians marched for Yaya Ayash's funeral. And uh, 
but but already even before that, the Hebron massacre had sealed the deal as far as them targeting civilians. Now, personally, I I don't think that's helped their cause at all. You know, when when you're vastly out outgunned by the other side, you have to maintain a, a positive image in the international community because, and I'm not even talking from a moral perspective right now. I'm just talking about from a tactical tactical perspective. International pressure is your only hope of winning because you can't do it by domestic pressure or by uh, military pressure because they've got you militarily outmatched. So international pressure from powers that are collectively greater than them is, is your only hope. And if you start targeting civilians, even if they're doing it too, uh, that, you know, it, it, it undermines any like moral credibility that you have in the international community. And on top of that, Baruch Goldstein was not an IDF soldier. This, this was not an organized military operation on the part of, you, you know, they didn't send him over there to do that. You know, like he was by all evidence, a lone actor. So that was the point of escalation though. After that, the Izzedine al Qassam brigades and Ahmed Yassin decided that they were going to uh, expand their military, their military operations to include targets, uh, that were civilian targets, Israeli civilian targets. I don't know the exact, uh, religious legality of that. So, you know, they were considering at this point, the entire nation of Israel with all of its citizens as one entity. Okay. As, as, as one hostile entity. So even the Israelis who didn't agree with, uh, with what Baruch had done, even the Israelis that were you know, in favor of the Palestinians having their own state and being liberated, they were targets too. Every, every Israeli was a target after that. Uh, so at that point, suicide bombers started targeting civilian targets within Palestine. And these would provoke these like extreme, you know, military operations from Israel. Now, that was the first intifada. Yahya Ayash was eventually assassinated. Um, Ahmad Yassin during the second intifada, which was when I was in college in the early 2000s, he at one point had offered Israel a truce. He said they would completely cease all military operations for 10 years if Israel would give the Palestinians a state in the West Bank, the Gaza Strip, and in East Jerusalem. And he was killed by Israel not too long after that. So there's been a lot of points at which, you know, peace could have happened, but things have always been messed up by one side or the other. And uh, it's, it's really a back and forth type situation that you've had really... <sighs> You could really trace it all the way back to the 40s, something the Palestinians refer to as the Nakba, which is basically the creation of the state of Israel when a lot of Palestinians were made refugees. So, uh, you know, it, it's a long conflict. Uh, this is something that I may not, this is something that I may or may not go into in the, in the video, but, you know, I obviously have a bias too. My own ethnic group went through a similar thing. We were under occupation for about 500 years. Uh, all... Europeans in in the Balkans, the whole south, southeastern part of Europe was was occupied, you know, by, by the uh, by the Ottoman Turks for about five hundred years. So I'd be hypocritical if I criticized, you know, the Palestinians too harshly on some of this stuff because we did a lot of the same stuff. Like the Greeks at one point had done similar terrorist attacks against the against the Turks. So I don't agree with that stuff. You know, but I'm not, uh, I, I don't agree with tactics like that. I'm Christian, so, you know, we don't agree with targeting civilians ever. Like, even if the enemy has done it, unarmed civilian targets are never, that, that's never something you can do. Uh, you, you can only defend life. You can't take innocent unarmed life, especially kids and stuff like that. That's totally out of the question for a Christian. Now, for, for Muslims, that's a controversial topic. And any Muslims that I have watching the channel, you can hop in the comment section and let me know your opinion on that as far as the legality of that in Islam. For Christians, that thing, that type of, of a response would be totally ruled out no, no matter what the enemy has done. You know, God's law doesn't change and civilian targets are totally out of the question. So that's just a little preview of that video and just a little bit uh, update on how things are going here in Chicago. It's, so far, it's nonviolent, but it's tense. There's been a lot of demonstrations. Um, and this is going on at a time when there's a lot of other stuff going on in Chicago. The migrant crisis here is going on. Uh, we've got about, it, I think it's about 20,000 at least now migrants uh, from Venezuela and other Latin American countries that have come up here and they're living in hotels, police stations on the street, the weather's starting to get cold. So that's a big problem that I'll probably discuss in an upcoming video. But I just wanted to, you know, get some of these issues out to you guys. 
get your opinion on this in the comment section, man, any Israelis or Palestinians, you guys can let me know uh, your experience and what, you know, your opinion on, on the latest events. It's your boy Chicago News. I'm out.